Hey, of course, my name is Adam. I'm from Screw, and you're watching White Phosphorus Media. Hello everyone again, this is Jay from White Phosphorus Media and I'm here with Adam Grossman, is that correct? Grossman, yeah. Grossman, of the well-known industrial band Screw that started off in the early 90s. Uh, I just wanted to start off with, um, obviously, the 11 years that you have been gone. Uh, 98, you wrapped everything up. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, what were the reasons and the deciding factors for why you decided to come back after such a long hiatus or hiatus? Right. Yeah, you know, the, the funny thing about it is, is that um, during those years, it's not so much that I was gone. I just pulled the plug on Screw and was doing other things. I mean, I did a record with uh, the singer from uh, this German band called Die Krups, uh, did uh, a record with Ministry, um, I did a lot of stuff, I got a master's degree, you know, I went back to university, um, so, yeah. it, and, you know, I, I continued doing musical projects, but the point being is that when I pulled the, the plug on Screw, you know, it was in large part due to the fact that, um, to be honest, I was just really, really fucking burned out. Um, the fact is, is that, you know, during those years of doing Screw, and really Screw was just um, a continuation of the previous band that I had called Anchor Watt, which was um, kind of a, a, a hardcore metal crossover thing that I started doing in like 84. So by the time, uh, you know, uh, 1998 came, came around, I had already been doing this for about 15 years, this same basic project, which was just doing really heavy uh, music um, and with electronic aspects to it, you know, and, and it wasn't that the, I was sick of the music or anything like that, it was just, you know, constant work for that amount of time and not really having, you know, a steady partner uh, or uh, banned in the process um, that entire time. So, you know, that combined with the fact that um, I also, uh, at, at, at that time, I was just going through a lot of changes. I'd been in this um, really fucked up car wreck uh, about four years earlier that I, I never really got proper treatment for. So a lot of things just kind of came to a head all at once, and I decided to pull the plug on... Um, not just screw, but a bunch of stuff. And in retrospect, it was probably uh, not the, the 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 best idea. Or I, there was probably other things I should say that I could have done that would have been equally, if not more, um, um, productive. You know, um, like a vacation. A what? vacation. You know? that's one of those things that I hadn't. You know, I had not taken any time off in like fifteen years, and. Um, so yeah, so that's in essence why I just ended up pulling the plug on the project. With uh, the projects uh, Die Brut and uh, Ministry, uh, the music is sort of uh, uh, similar in regards to what you used to do, and you had just said that you were doing the same sort of heavy style industrial. What differences then had you found going on to these other projects and working with them? What was it for you? Was that also like a holiday, I suppose? Well, you know, it, it, it was in a way, um, although <laughs> maybe a holiday in hell. Uh, you know, the fact is that, you know, I, I decided what I, part of my decision was I wanted to be in someone else's band for a while. I didn't want to be the captain. I didn't want to be, you know, in charge of the project. I didn't want to be steering the ship. So I just wanted to, to collaborate because, in all honesty, collaboration has been kind of the thing that I've been after all my life. I mean, I don't just do music. I do film. I do art. Um, you know, I, I, I do a variety of, of creative um, medium, if you will. And um, it's the collaborative process that I really love uh, in all of that. Um, the collaborative process meaning that, 
you know, you're involved in uh, with with a goal, and you're working with at least one other person, and you're you know trading off ideas and feeding off each other's energy, and and um, working as a team. I mean, that's the thing that that's one of the aspects of the creative process that I really love, and that I was not getting uh, in terms of my work in Screw. Um, you know, one of the things, one of the projects that I did after Screw was uh, a project with. Um, uh, Paul Barker, the bass player in Ministry, and um, we uh, we wrote an album basically, and it was one of the coolest things that I've ever done. We ended up kind of not ever finishing it because we never could find a singer that we really wanted to work with. But you know, it was that collaborative effort um, that I really loved, and um, and like I said, you know, still to this day, that stuff is some of the the material that I've worked on that I'm most proud of. So how do you, if you felt so proud about the uh, Paul Barker collaboration, what was it about the other two projects that you worked on that you didn't like so much? Well, I mean, you know, along with the collaborative process comes the business end of things as well, which is, you know, it it really sucks. I really hate that part of it. Um, I really hate the fact that you know, there's a certain amount of money that I need on a monthly basis in order to, you know, pay the bills and feed myself and blah, 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 you know, all that shit. And so, unfortunately, that kind of thing can really, um, you know, get in the way of, uh, of uh, you know, the completion or the continuation of a project. Um, it's, it's unfortunate, you know, there's also, you know, personality, there's, you know, there's all kinds of things. I mean, you know, I'll be honest with you, the uh, point in time when I, uh, bailed on the ministry thing, it was just like, um, you know, we'd done a movie, we did, uh, wrote a bunch of songs, we did a record, um, and when it came time to, you know, start the, uh, pre-production process for, um, you know, doing the live thing, touring and all of that, I was just, you know, burned on it at that point. It had already been like three years and, um, you know, I was ready to do something else, you know. Um, and and see, that's the trade-off too is when you're working for someone else, it's their ship, you know what I mean? It's their deal. They're going to make the decisions on how things work and um, and that's that's perfectly acceptable, you know, especially if you go into the situation knowing that. So, um, you know. I, I suppose um, you leaving the band and not wanting to be the captain sort of made you in the end feel like you wanted to go and you'd learnt something from it. And you wanted to go back and maybe start Screw and be in control of things again, maybe. Well... I don't know if that really had much uh, uh, to do with it. I'll be honest with you, you know, playing, because prior to pulling the plug on Screw, I had never played in someone else's band. I was always, every band I'd ever been in, I was always the the singer, or the songwriter, rather, uh, you know, the primary organizer, the den mother, if you will, you know, because I just have this, um, I think, natural... Um, I don't know what it is, but this this leadership thing that just comes very naturally to me. So it's very easy for me to put a project together. Um, now, you know, like after I uh, bailed on the ministry thing, one of the things that I did was I um, finished my master's degree uh, at uh, this university here in the States and um, ended up uh, working as a uh, psychotherapist for several years. So, I mean, there's a lot of different things that I've done. But, even, I mean, even during that time, I was still doing, you know, music and art. It's like that one of the most difficult things for me in life, unfortunately, is to make a decision about what it is that I want to do. You know what I mean? It's like, because I, there are many things that I want to do, and I'm capable of doing a lot of different things. So, so, you're, so you're saying uh, your decision is uh, like a, a nail in the coffin in, in the respect of that once you've said it, you'll just go forward and go through with it till the very end, and that's that? Uh, no. No? Okay. I think what, what, I was, what I was trying to say, and I apologize 
I'm not used to getting up this early. Um, so I'm still kind of, you know, a little foggy. But um, I think basically what I was trying to say is the unfortunate part was that, um, you know, in, in having new experiences, like, for example, going and playing in other people's band, like going and playing in Al's band, which was an incredible experience. I learned, you know, a lot um, in working with him and with Paul. Um, but I'd never done that before. And so it was, uh, to, to discover that, oh, there's, you know, there's, there's also a balance between <laughs> being a hired gun, or I guess what I was looking for was some sort of a balance between being a hired gun and being the sole proprietor of a business, if you will. Okay. All right. Well, I don't know if that. That makes more sense. No, that's that's fine. It does. Uh, okay. Well, if that we had, if we just had difficulties on that last question, <laughs> this question is quite a lot larger. And I was just uh, wanting to ask if you'd been keeping your ear to the ground in regards to what to expect from the music industry on Screws Return. Uh, and I was I was more so getting at the examples on piracy, falling CD sales, the rise of MP3 downloads and what right. little return you actually make uh, right. as an artist distributing. Well, I, yeah, and, you know, I can tell you that, you know, none of uh, what's happening in the quote-unquote music industry um, is really any, uh, too any different for the artist. Um, you know, I signed my first record deal and I'm going to give away my age here, but it was 19, I think 1984 was my first deal. And I'll be honest with you, um, I've lived the life of a starving artist, the, you know, the majority of my life. Um, the, the, the record, the, the, the music industry has never been geared towards uh, the, the, the common artist making a living. You know, it's all about everybody else makes money before the artist does. I mean, let's face it, you know, you can go back to many, many court cases um, from, you know, the artists from the late 40s and the 50s. You know, these old, you know, blues guys who, you know, would get paid 50 bucks to record an album and then the uh, label would take the record, sell it and make, you know, whatever money was to be made. And the artist actually never made any more than the original fifty dollars. You know what I mean? So that's kind of that's that's kind of the and it's of course it's not like that now, but to some degree it is because that's the the seed that the entire industry grew from. So for all you know I mean? so for all the changes in in media, nothing, uh, not too many things have actually changed for the artists in any way. Then, I you know I don't think so. I mean um, you know. There's some things that have happened. I mean, my, you know, my whole idea about my purpose in terms of, of creating art is not about, um, you know, am I going to be able to buy a Maserati with the proceeds from this record? You know what I mean? That's not, that's kind of not really where I'm at or that's not where I, where I ever come from. You know, my purpose in life, I, I believe, is, is to, um, to create, whether it's, you know, audio, whether it's, you know, some sort of visual thing, whether it's, you know, writing. I mean, that's what, that's what feeds me. And so that's why I do it. You know, we, we may not even ever uh, get a uh, quote unquote record deal with uh, this material. And, you know, if that's the case, that's okay too. Obviously, we're reaching people <laughs> without it already because, I mean, the weird thing is, is that the only thing that's really been surprising is how quickly I found the new material to somehow have found, have made its way onto the internet. I mean, it was insane. I nearly got whiplash. It happened so fast, and I still don't know how it originally happened. So the the, the demos from your latest record that's on YouTube at the moment is that what you're referring to? Yeah. Um, right. Exactly. Yeah. There were songs that. Uh, popped up on the internet, like on YouTube, and I, I, I couldn't believe because we hadn't even pressed a demo yet. You know, we hadn't even created 
a uh, an actual disc to send out to people, and it was already out there. And you feel and I mean, happy about? How do you feel about that? Actually, like, I'm mean, you're happy, you're glad that it's already on YouTube, or? I mean, I, it's you know, I can't really say that I have a reaction one way or the other. I find it amusing, you know. Um, and I find it interesting. It's not, you know, disappointing. You know, I'm I'm not this person that's uh, I'm not the type of person who's really into, you know, control. I, I don't need to have control over anything. I mean, it's art. You know, I I created it um, because I enjoyed creating it. And if someone else wants to check it out and enjoy it or hate it or whatever, that's totally fine with me. I'm, you know that. Uh... I'm glad that it's it's actually there that, that those demos are there. It's uh, it's very fierce music actually. Um, so oh. I think it's a it's a good thing that it's someone somehow has got it up there. Because when I went I, when I went, oh sorry, go right ahead. No, I was just gonna say I'm really glad that you uh, that you said that, but that that you uh, you're glad it's there and that it's fierce because that's the point. You know what I mean? That's the point. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, yeah, because when I went searching to, to do this interview, um, it, um, it did help uh, to listen to your sound, especially when you yourself are actually only doing small snippets of what you're releasing and um, there hasn't been um, a lot of new music from you guys in that, in that regard. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll move uh, right along. Um, with what we've just spoken about and an album being released in the near future, how do you actually feel about Screw's return in this uh, inhospitable climate where albums seem to be becoming a thing of the past and disposable, downloadable hit singles are what seems to be the going trend? But in a way, we've already, um, we've already spoken a little bit on this. So Yeah, yeah no, that's, that's totally cool. You know, I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever... Um, thought in terms of the hit single thing anyway so you know um that's kind of neither here nor there um and i and i understand what you're saying is that that's what it's kind of like the film industry you know the what the film industry has become is about the summer blockbuster yep you know the the small interesting film has very nearly uh, gone the way of, you know, the dinosaur. You know what I mean? It almost is non-existent. But um, there are people out there that still support that idea of, of the small film, just like there's people out there that still, you know, my idea is I want to press vinyl. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I want to do vinyl because I love the way vinyl sounds. And maybe that's just a personal thing and maybe it's selfish of me or whatever. But that's one thing I want to do. I want to press vinyl and, you know, give well, it, people... It is your record, so I'm pretty sure you can uh, do it however you like. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> but, yeah, so, you know, I, I, and I, again, I, I appreciate the, the validity of your question, too, because the fact of the matter is, is that I don't go into to anything or I try not to go into anything with expectations because... You know, there's an old saying that, you know, expectations are really just um, opportunity for disappointment. So I do what I do because that's what I do. All right. Okay, definitely. So um, I was just um, watching uh, your YouTube video and it stated that the uh, new record is, re is in response to what's going on around you at the moment, especially in the States. Uh, that's in regards to the uh, banking system and the American representatives. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's funny. This has been a long time in coming, and it's part of the reason why I decided uh, to do, to write a screw record. It's why I decided to put, you know, another version of the band together um, is because I felt like, you know, in in the past, um, Screw has mainly been um, a process for me to express things that um, I had going on internally, right? Um, it's never been um, so much a uh, um, kind of preachy or informative kind of project, um, but... You know, about ten years ago, I um, 
I got sober. Um, I, I quit doing dope, quit, quit drinking. And, um, you know, the funny thing about doing that is it's like waking up, you know, very literally. It's like waking up. It's like becoming conscious of uh, the world around you. And when I woke up and I saw what was going on just in terms of how I personally, because, you know, um, I think we're, we're all human beings and we're all um, first and foremost affected by the things that touch us on a, a daily basis in a very personal way. Um, you know, and when I saw the things that were going on and, and saw what happened during the uh, 9-11 and, and during the Bush years after that, I mean, it was like, it was almost like this weird kind of sick um, nightmare coming to life, you know, right before my very eyes. And um, as time went on, it, uh, it, it became more and more obvious to me that there was something that I felt like I needed to do about it. Well, you know, what can I do? You know, uh, what, what, are, what, is, what are my talents? What, are, what, is, what is the most effective way that I can um, make a difference? Um, and, you know, I, I, I thought at one point in time that the most effective way that I can make a difference is by how I live my life. And I still feel like, you know, that's a really super important part of it. But um, for me, you know, that just wasn't enough. Um, for me, I, I felt like I needed to do more. And, you know, I'll be honest, uh, there was a couple of friends that I had that were really responsible for kind of convincing me to, to do this again um, because I was doing a lot of different stuff. I was doing some electronic stuff. Um, I was really involved in uh, working in um, working on some film projects with friends uh, and, you know, just in conversation with friends and stuff, you know, people were just really, like, um, encouraging and saying, you know, you need to do a, a screw record. You need to, and it, I was a little overwhelmed by the, the process that, uh, because I didn't even have a band at that point. Do you feel you know? that the project ha had been long gone before these friends of yours came to you and said, you've got to do this? Do you feel that it was ever going to be resurrected as a project again? before this or the all your friends came to you and you thought well hey how about that maybe they're right yeah it, it, kind of like that yeah i mean i to be honest i'm i don't think about um and this may be a huge fault of mine i don't know um i think in terms of today you know um i think in terms of uh you know, what do I need to do right now what, to put one foot in front of the other to get through um, my day to get the things accomplished that I want to get accomplished today, whether that's quite literally, you know, feeding myself or, um, you know, working on a piece of art or something like that. Um, I, I really don't put a lot of thought or energy into uh, the past or the future. I mean, you know, the, the, the future may not even happen. You know, I could walk out the door this morning and get hit by a bus. And then, you know, what have I wasted my energy on thinking about tomorrow or next month or next year for? And, and last year and 10 years ago is, is history. It's written. I mean, I can gain perspective by reflecting on it, but that's pretty much the extent of it. So, you know, at the point in time when I started putting Screw together, uh, it was just, it was never something that I'd really thought about doing until, um, like, like I said, some friends said, you know, you really, what about do, doing a screw record? And actually, that's not completely true. You know, over the years, um, I'd get um, emails or uh, contacts from, uh, you know, small labels or booking agents about, you know, doing, you know, a tour of Japan, you know, for, you know, four shows and, you know, making a bunch of money and, you know, or doing a, a tour of Europe or, or, you know, or putting out a record or, or whatever. And at the time, you know, that those, I'd get con those contacts, I just had other stuff going on. So it wasn't really anything I was thinking about. It wasn't until, you know, I had time and people were like, hey, let's do this, you know. Um, is uh, Screw's latest record 
Um, since it has uh, is more message based, uh, does it have any messages about the ongoing conflicts overseas that the United States are involved in, or how do you feel about that whole situation? Did that yeah. Go, sorry, go ahead. Uh, oh, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, well, you know, it, it is. It's all. It's about all of that. It's not just about you know the states and. Um, it's really more about what I consider to be um, the, the the modern day human condition. You know, I mean, when I started writing this material, God, I guess it was like two and a half years ago. I started putting a band together. You know, found a, a guitar player and you know then a drummer and went through a couple of different drummers and then added another guitar player. I mean, it, this has been a really slow process and. Um, kind of an interesting process as well, but I guess to the point of the question that uh, when I started writing this material, you know, none of the stuff um, that was that's happened over this <clears throat> past year, like in Egypt or you know the Arab Spring, so to speak, none of that was going on. Okay. Um, none of the you know the the student riots in. Um, in France, uh, or the, the riots in, in the UK, none of that stuff was going on at the time, but, um, and I'm not like some kind of, you know, future seer, um, fortune teller or anything like that, but I think that there's been a very obvious, um, some ideas happening in the collective consciousness that, um, you know, if you're open to uh, to, to understanding, um, you know, there's no denying that there's, there's something going on. And I mean, you know, the States is just an example of it. I mean, it's not, it's not just the, the United States, although I really believe that, uh, the U S is a huge exporter of misery, um, to the rest of the world. Um, you know, but the States, you know, um, it, it's just, you know, I, I can't make an excuse for it. I don't think it's about the country itself. I think it's about people. I think it's about, um, you know, some very, very basic ideas or tenets that, that people live by. I, I had a, a conversation with um, an old acquaintance recently, and um, she said to me that, she said, it must be really difficult to constantly be unhappy with or, or in a state of unacceptance of the reality that we're living in. And, and I, my response was, well, yeah, but doing the right thing is not doing the easy thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure, I could go, you know, suck on a fucking crucifix and think, oh, you know, Jesus is going to make everything all right and, you know, put on my Bible blinders and, and ignore the realities of the world and go make a lot of money. I mean, I'm a smart guy. I can go work, you know, in some shit job and, um, you know, make a lot of money. I mean, I, you know, I can go be a lawyer or whatever. But that's kind of not really what, what feeds me. What feeds me is, you know, um, is trying to do the right thing. You know what I mean? Trying to, I, I feel like we've lost something, you know, like being there for our neighbor. I recently, and this is a great example, I, I was recently on the re receiving end of um, some really uh, amazing energy in terms of, uh, I had some surgery, I had um, a health issue that I had to deal with and I was kind of out of it <coughs> for about three weeks and um, my girlfriend and I just uh, a couple of months ago moved into a new place and so we've got a bunch of new neighbors and um, you know, one of our neighbors made this big pot of this amazing soup, you know, uh, for me, uh, because she saw that I, you know, just come out of the hospital, et cetera. And, you know, it's like that to me is worth far more than, you know, any huge bonus at the end of the year or any, you know, boat or, or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's definitely, like, definitely. I'm to me, that, Oops. To me, that's that's really powerful, and you know that is what um, I believe. You know, we're supposed to be about. You know, that coming to our neighbor's need. You know, when uh, 
uh, someone, um, you know, is in trouble, uh, I'm going to be there if I can. You know, and if I can't be there, then I'm going to do whatever I can to get someone else there. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, what happened? Why? Or how did we get to the place where people, you know, are um, willing to um, to watch their their neighbors suffer? Turn, you know, turn I a, just turn I, a blind yeah. eye. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've seen some really sick shit this year. <laughs> I watched. Uh, here in the States, you know, there's going to be an election uh, in 2012, and um, I, I've been watching the um, the Republicans have been, you know, they've got a bunch of people that are, you know, running for their nomination of their party, and I've been watching the debates because it's just, it's fascinating to me how people who are supposed to be representative of the best of this country how they they can have absolutely no clue as to what the country what the people of this country are really about because i think the mo for the most part the people of this country are really good people just like everywhere i think people are basically good but something happens when these guys get into office and they get into power and they become surrounded by this um this this uh this industry of, of, of power wielding, you know what I mean? It becomes about money. And that's really the bottom line now is it's really about it's money. You know, I think serving in public office uh, used to be um, something that people did because they wanted to give back to the community, but it's now become a career choice. And I think it's a really bad idea that it's become a career choice because you know, it's just like, well, you can't blame a corporation for their bottom line being uh, profit, turning a profit, and, and being willing to do whatever it takes to turn a profit. That's what a corporation's about. And well, I maybe guess that's you feel, maybe you feel that the uh, government has become its own money-making corporation or it's in bed with the, the same corporations that you speak about. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, listen... Be careful because if you get me started, I could go for an hour. <laughs> maybe, maybe for another interview, not about well, yeah. we'll do and, a political and, one. And, and, and that is really the bottom line um, is that what's happened is, is that, you know, that, that old saying of uh, money talks and bullshit walks has unfortunately come to a scary, scary reality. Because that's really what um, what what it's all become about. You know, people's uh, well being uh, is you know secondary, if, if even secondary. You know, or, or tertiary. I mean, I'm not <laughs> even sure it's, it's that. You know, it's really become about you know, and these the the fact of you know, if you ask most people, well, who is it that you know um, prints the money for the United States? I think well, the government does. No, it's not true. It's a private, uh, private company. The Federal Reserve is not connected to the United States government. It's a bank, a private bank that loans money to the United States government. So, I guess the point is, is that you know, as as people become, you know, and thank God that you know we've got you know Skype, that we've got the internet, that we've got you know ways to. Uh, to be exposed to new information because most people don't know that, you know, in 19, I think it was 1913, things changed. I watched and that uh, exact YouTube video. <laughs> uh, what was it? Um, from fascism to, uh, from freedom to fascism or something. Oh, well, yeah. But I mean, there's a ton of information out yeah. there, you know, I mean, that, and, and that, that will allow you to understand really um, what we're living in. And, and it's, you have to be able to understand what we're living in before you can do anything to make a change. You know what I mean? If you don't know that you need to change something or do something differently, then you're going to continue feeding into the same, you know, unhealthy system that you're uh, supporting. So, okay. Sorry, I get off no, topic No, that's, that's perfectly fine. <laughs> I mean, it's sort of it, your music... Your music is, is the, uh, your topic at the moment anyway, so it's all, it's all related. Uh, I wanted to uh, go back uh, quite a number of years. 
I was interested to know after reading someone's opinion that Screw's music changed dramatically in the 90, 1996 album Shadow of a Doubt from the more mm. early 90s industrial metal sound to a more thrash metal sound because of the uh, car accident you had spoken of earlier, which just seems bizarre to me, but, but I just wanted mm -hmm. to know if there was any truth to the, the change in music style because of this car accident. Well, you know, uh, Screw throughout the 90s was always, for better or worse, um, a reflection of me, you know, where I was at, what was going on um, internally at whatever point in time that I was writing. Um, you know, and I don't think there was, there was never, you know, there wasn't like a conscious decision, okay, we're going to do this, or we're going to do that. You know, that's not how I, I work. It's not ever uh, been how I worked. You know, the fact is, is that um, we were writing a record. I was in a, a pretty vicious car wreck. A uh, guy crossed over the median of a highway and uh, hit me head on. Um, and, uh, you know, the fact of the matter is, yeah, I mean, I guess it did have an effect. I mean, I was really um, lucky to get out of that one alive. Um, and, you know, I uh, had a lot of physical issues going on. I was on a lot of medications. Um, so, yeah, of course, you know, I mean, I think... You know, everything that you experience affects what you do, whether it's the food you're eating, the, you know, drugs you're putting in your body. I mean, you know, it, it all has an effect. Um, you know, when I listen to that record now, it sounds really dark. And I think uh, I was in a really dark place at that, at that time in my life. Um, in fact, that's around the time um, when my um, drug use started really uh, picking up tempo, if you will. So, um, so do you feel that all that um, may have um, obviously led on to your 98 release? Uh, how do you feel about that when I've read... I'm, I have no uh, feelings here nor there on the record, but I just read so many like horrible things, things about it. And I was just wondering yeah. if all of these things culminated, like the drug use and the car accident... Uh, into that sort of last record where you decided, well, that's it for me. I'm I'm not really giving it my best. Well, you know, the last record was actually a record called um, Angel Seed. Yeah, Is yeah, that what? yeah, yeah. And you know, when I did that record, um, you know, the recording of that record for me is actually a bit of a uh, a blurry time, um, and. Uh, because, and, and in all honesty, there's a lot of recording of that record that I don't remember, you know. Um, and I think that, um, yeah, yeah, I think that, you know, in answer to your question, to make it, you know, pretty cut and dried, that, um, you know, not taking care of myself uh, in any way, shape or form, physically, emotionally, spiritually, in any way, um, led to me going, you know what, I'm pulling the plug on this shit. I, I can't deal anymore. I'm going to go play in someone else's band. I'm going to go let someone else, you know, be the captain and and, and all that for a while, you know. And, and like I said, we, we talked about that. So, yeah, I think that, you know, your, your assumption is correct. I mean, although, you know, I have to say that um, I feel like personally that each of the albums – that I did, you know, from uh, Burning to Dusted to Shadow of Doubt to Angel Seed, I think each one of them was uh, closer and closer to being becoming a, a more complete or more realized um, encapsulation of what I was trying to do at the time. You know what I mean? Um, All right. So... Uh Okay, well, I would like to know then about the very early years of Screw, or not even Screw, or I mean just yourself and what attracted you to add uh, like samplers and electronica into your uh, metal. Or music. Right. Yeah, um, you know, I, I was a, uh, in my undergraduate degree, I was a, a film student. And so, um, 
you know, back then, uh, and, and that combined with the fact that I grew up in the punk rock scene, um, kind of, uh, really those two things were like the biggest influences on, you know, the music that I ended up creating because, um, what I was doing in, in undergraduate in, in university, uh, was creating film pieces that were, um, kind of like paintings that I could envision people eventually, you know, hanging a monitor of some sort on their walls many, many years before, you know, the advent of flat screens. But it was something that I, I saw in my mind that, you know, people would hang these flat screens on their walls with, you know, these three to five minute film loops going on with, you know, really fucked up audio accompaniment. And so what I was doing was I was using ghetto blasters, you know, jam boxes, yeah. um, to create these sound collages, um, like creating loops, basically. I mean, I didn't even know what it was called then, but that's what I was doing was creating loops. I said um, tape loops. Tape loops and, and bouncing them back and forth between, uh, you know, playing one on, uh, playing two different uh, loops that I'd created on two different uh, ghetto blasters and recording on a third. Okay, yep. And then bouncing those tracks around. So it was really, really, um, you know, it was really, really, it's so bizarre to, to see where we're at now in terms of technology and what we're able to do just with the most basic equipment now compared to back then because it was like, you know, the Stone Age back then. But anyway... That's that's basically how um, how I got started, you know. And so you just went I, looking for samplers or something, did you? Or there was there was no such thing as samplers. Oh, okay. I mean, we're talking uh, early '80s. Okay. Uh, you know, and so you know, like for example, the first sampler I ever saw um, was in I think '88, maybe '87, '88, and it was. Uh, uh, emulator. Yep. It was an emulator too. And, you know, even at that point in time, that was not technology that was affordable to, you know, some punk rock, you know, university student like myself. You know what I mean? But what, what I was able to do was con uh, this music store that I, you know, frequented and a guy that I knew that worked there into, you know, letting me um, come in and work on stuff. Is that for your you first know? screw record or just for your first? That was, that was actually for the first Anchor Watt record, which oh, okay. I guess came out in like 86. And what we did was we created this, um, this kind of intro that was very, you know, it was... It, it is what it is. It is. It, it is what it what, what it is. I mean, it, it's, it was very cinematic, you know. But it was all done on a sampler. Okay. Um, and um, from there, you know, the second Anchor Watt record was actually the first time uh, someone in a review had written some something about industrial metal. I mean, I'd never heard that term before. Um, before reading a review of, of the second Anchor Watt record, which I think came out in 88, maybe. Um, or, yeah, 88. And uh, and we used electronics a lot more on that record. And, and in fact, by that time, I think we had started working on a... Um, maybe it was a little bit later than that. I think we also did that stuff on an emulator. And then we also had some friends that had... Uh, the first in Sonic uh, sampler, which same company, uh, Emu. Um, so you know, in answer to your question, you know, in es in, in, in essence, initially, um, the use of electronics and, and samples came out of the film work that I was doing, and and I, when I did that stuff in at university, I thought, wow, this would be really cool to be able to combine this with you know, this hardcore, you know, punk rock shit that I was doing at the time. Um, because it's just like adding another color to your palette. You know what I mean? It's a way of uh, uh, more completely expressing the emotion or the idea 
that you're trying to express, you know. I mean, it, it would be kind of a bummer if we only had, you know, black and white paint to paint with. In fact, it would make black and white paintings less powerful because, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah, like, definitely, you know, definitely. The more that you can add to your palette, the, the more complete a, a, a picture you can paint. So, so things must be a lot easier now with technology for your music. Uh, and Have you embraced that? <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy, man. Um, I actually, um, a few years ago, I uh, I was like, you know, having been doing, for someone that had been doing music on computers for as long as I had, I knew so little about computers. I mean, I started working with electronics in the music, like I said, back in the, you know, mid 80s when computers were like, I mean, you know, I can do more with my, with my phone now than you could do on a computer then. Um, so, you know, I, I thought, you know, well, I don't want to go back to school and study computers. That sounds really, you know, boring to me. So what I did was I went and got a job at Apple, not at an Apple store, but at their actual, um, there's a, uh, big, uh, I don't know, line? campus, oh, campus, campus yeah, yeah. here in, in Austin, you know, where they do tech support, and blah, 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 all this. And I have to tell you, I, I got an amazing um, exposure to an education uh, working at, there. And I, I worked there for like, I don't know, I think two years, two and a half years. It was really terrible, you know, working in the corporate world. But um, it was a trade-off that I was willing to, to do at, at that point in time. Um, because I really did want to learn about, you know, the technology. I, I felt like, you know, it was my responsibility to learn about the operating systems and um, and the software as well. And, and I have to uh, say that I'm really grateful for that period because I did learn a lot there. I mean, I, I it was really an amazing education. And so, yeah, you know, to see just, you know, the consumer level software that, for example, when you buy a new Mac, you know, you get GarageBand on the computer. Well, yeah. you can do more in GarageBand than you could do in the software that I did a bunch of records on. You know, like um, I remember doing, uh, using um, Cakewalk, you know, that's uh, programming and songwriting, whatever, software um, back in the early 90s. Um, I mean, it's just amazing the, 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 the progress that you can, you know, just consumer level software is way, way so much further advanced than what we were using to actually make records back in the early 90s. It's crazy. All right. Um, well, why is it, I also read in your, uh, your internet site, that you well, I'm not sure if it was you, but uh, that the band that you have at the moment is considered to be the definitive version of what had always been envis envisioned. And I was wondering why the difference between the band that you used to have uh, comparable to the one today. Yeah, you know, um, someone else said that to me recently. <laughs> You know, and it's weird, you know, the first show that we did, this this version of the band, the first show that we did, one of uh, this, this buddy of mine who was a guitar player in Screw back in the day, uh, came to the, he was, came to the show and um, he didn't even tell me this, but he told another friend of mine, he, he said, after our set, he goes, that's what we were trying to do back in the day. And I found that really interesting because... I, you know, I think it's it's due to a lot of things. I mean, you know, I'm uh, I'm I'm not the same person I was in 1991. You know what I mean? I'm older. I'm wiser, just due to the experiences that I've had, um, and you know how I how I chose people to play with back then is very different than how I choose people to, to associate with or hang out with or play with now. Um, and I think that that's a big part of it. But I also think that probably the biggest part of it is the amount of, uh, the amount of energy that I've put into, um, 
you know, becoming who I am today, you know, growing and, and, and focusing on becoming a better person, on, on uh, you know, having an understanding of the world around me, of, of you know, the, the understanding of, that the fact of the matter is, is that I'm a human being, I'm physical, I'm, you know, uh, mental or emotional, and I'm spiritual, and those three things have to be taken care of. You know what I mean? I have to feed myself daily. Otherwise, I'm going to get really hungry and eventually get sick. You know, but it's that's just the physical part. You know what I mean? So I think it's a combination of a lot of things. I mean, the guys that I'm playing with now are, you know, they're all people that I would want to hang out with, um, you know, on Thanksgiving or, or whatever. You right, know what okay, I mean? Yeah. Um, it goes to you the next know, wedding. I, they're all your best man. Well, yeah, you know, and, and um, they're people that I would trust with, you know, if I had a kid, I would let any of these guys babysit my kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's that kind of a situation, whereas in the past, man, I played with some some people that were really amazing people, and I played with some people that were really, like, in a lot of pain and, and, and really very sick, you know? Um, right. and some, some of those people survived, some didn't, some are doing the same thing, some are better, you know, it's like, whatever, I, I don't know, know how to go any further with that question, no, other than fine. to say, other than to say, and, and I think this is the important part, is that, you know, the guys that I'm playing with today, um, are adults, you know what I mean, and, and, and n have an understanding of, um, of what we're doing. And, and even if someone in, in the project's not a songwriter, they're giving 110% in terms of what their abilities or capabilities are. And I think that's, that's what makes a huge difference. Okay. Well, um, with your newly envisioned uh, band, what can we expect from you in the upcoming year? What have you got planned? Yeah, God, that's a good question, man. You know, the, I, I don't... I don't I, no, if I can tell you what we have planned, but Especially I can tell you... Especially when you only think from day-to-day, uh, -day, there's a problem right yeah. there. You're like, <laughs> you might just... Make... Here's, what we, here's what we hope for. You know, what, what we're hoping to do is um, we're hoping that we figure out a way to um, we're, we're hoping that we get a, 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 can figure out a way to, to, to speak to more people. You know, we're hoping that we can figure out a way to expose more people to um, what we're talking about, um, to the noise that we're making, because um, that's really our goal at this point. You know, it's um, we want to make a record. We want to do a record that um, is really reflective of the uh, the intensity of of the message, you know, of what we're talking about. I mean, what we're talking about is really important stuff, and, I, and I'm not even sure that most people understand that. Um, I don't know. Um, uh, but what we're hoping is that um, there's going to be some way that we get out there. You know, we're hoping to, uh, to play a lot live, you know, and, and do it all over the place, do it, you know, in the States, do it in Europe do it in Australia, in Japan. We want to go to South America. I mean, we want to play as much as possible. Um, and, you know, I think that's kind of going to be the key to this next year. I guess you'll uh, have a lot of YouTube uploads then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big market well, there. And, and that's the thing is that we can do that. You know, we can, we can put focus into, um, you know, filmmaking. You know, uh, in addition to, I mean, there's actually, there's a ton of live footage of us on YouTube. And again, it's like, it's crazy how that stuff gets loaded up out there. Um, you know, I don't know how it happens. You know, if someone shows up at the show with their little camera and, you know, films it and um, uploads it the next day, it's, it's incredible. It's amazing to me. When, uh, when is your new album being released? Do you have any idea on that? Well, we, you know, we don't have an idea on that. Right now, what's going on, um, and this is something that I've had to uh, begrudgingly um, t 
take more of an active role in and um, really kind of focus on more is the business end of it. Um, I never, ever wanted to do that, and that's why I think I got um, screwed over so much, pardon the pun, uh, financially. And, you know, I mean, our, our stuff is on iTunes. The old screw stuff is on iTunes. Mm. I didn't have anything to do with that. I don't know who put that up there. I don't know who's getting paid for that. You know what I mean? It's like, wow, that's that's uh, that's kind of crazy. And it's something that, you know, I've got to eventually get to the bottom of and, and figure out. But Well, you should do it soon since you have a new album out and a lot of other people are going to want to backtrack yeah. your uh, old albums. Yeah. So, but, you know, basically I've got a guy, um, uh, actually a company in... Uh, in Germany, who are representing us right now, a management company and um, Red Rock Management. And, you know, I, I met uh, Richie over the internet years ago and um, just really, um, you know, he's like me. He's, you know, old school, comes from the, the scene, you know, uh, he's done it. He's, you know, been a musician. Um, he, uh, I believe is the best person at this point in time to look out for my interests and and to, to help screw you know achieve what we're trying to achieve and I guess basically what that is is you know we want to put out a record I mean the, the material that is out there right now is you know it's it's home recorded uh, stuff and it's it's pretty cool you know the mixes are pretty decent on it but it's not um, to the extent that they're basically just um, rough writing versions of the songs. I mean, the riffs that you're hearing in those songs are, you know, when I was writing them. Um, so those songs weren't fully uh, developed even at that point in time. So, you know, we're hoping that this year we're going to record a record and I want to go play, you know, I want to go uh, hit the road. And it's not to make money, but um, it's to, like I said, you know, it has to pay for itself, obviously, but... Um, you know, I want to play in front of as many people this coming year as possible. Um, the other thing is, is that there's a couple of film projects that um, that I want to complete this coming year that would uh, that are along the same lines as what we're doing with Screw right now. So, you know, figuring out a way to to um, you know to do all of that would you know be ideal. Um, you know, so that's kind of what we're hoping. Well, I, I hope you can. Uh, I, I guess if you still haven't got the uh, workings of the um, a studio and everything, it might still be like what a year away or something. Or you have no idea. Yeah, we don't really have any idea. I mean, I think the first, you know, the first quarter of this coming year is going to tell the tale. Um, I mean, we've already had a ton of offers to do. Well, not a ton of offers, but we've had some really great offers to do uh, festivals and stuff. So we may do some of that. Um, but, you know, the first and foremost is we want to have uh, a complete, you know, recording done. And like I said, I want to, I want to hear what this sound, stuff sounds like on vinyl. You know, yep. that's what, that's one of the things that I'm really excited about this year, you know, so recording a, a, a the, a full on record. I mean, you know, we're still writing material too. I mean, we've got uh, some newer stuff uh, that somehow has not found its way on the internet. Yet. <laughs> I was going to say, hopefully, it will find its way on the internet. But, um... but you know, we're actually doing some. Uh, in fact, just last night we were discussing like putting some finishing touches on these two new songs that we've just, uh, or the two latest things that we've written that. Are so much more powerful than anything that uh, that's you know people have heard yet. So well, yeah, so this is sounding cool. great from what I've heard. I'm looking. I am well, looking thanks. forward to a release. So um, thanks. Well, I appreciate you saying that. Thank you so much for your time. It has been a very in depth and in interesting conversation. I've been uh, uh, gladdened to just get a uh, to know you a lot better, and I hope uh, viewers will also. Uh, get to know you a lot better too, and I, I think um, this will give other people an opportunity to know your band and who you are. And I hope that they um, support you in your endeavors in the future. Well, listen, I, I just want to say one last thing, and I, I want to thank you for um, your your support. And you know, this was uh, a very thought uh, thoughtful and thought provoking interview, and I, I appreciate that. 
Um, and the, the thing that I want to leave you with is that, you know, whether you, whether people in, in general, you know, dig what we're doing or not, that's totally cool. But the, the, the most important thing that I want to um, get across is that, you know, we have the ability to, um, to make changes, you know, for the better in, 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 in all of our, our lives um, and for all of our neighbors as well. Um, but we have to be able to, to take back the power. We have to be powerful. We have to feel powerful instead of feeling powerless. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. And what you're saying, you can tell are happening worldwide, you know, that everyone's yeah. saying the same things in a little way or in their own way. So perhaps, you know, things will change. Yeah, yeah. Well, not uh, perhaps, I'm, we just are, have to make a difference. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And I'm super hopeful about that. You know, I, I feel really positive about it. And again, I, I really appreciate your time. And, and uh, the guys all wanted me to say, uh, you know, that when we come down there, you know, they, they want to share a beer. So. All oh, right, okay. We'll, try, we'll, we'll find one of those two liter beers that are apparently in Australia. <laughs> I haven't actually seen one myself, but I'll get to the bottom of it. I'll get one sent from Darwin for you all, okay? Right, awesome. Well, um,. Um, good luck for the future, and I'm really looking forward to your new album. And uh, all the best, and all best wishes to you and your band, and your right life. On. Okay, see ya. Yeah. Bye bye.